Welcome to Critical Blues Reviews. I'm your host, Critical. Today, I just snorted. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be reviewing a film that just came out. And man, I actually got turned on to this film. I saw the cover of this film, my cousin Silas. Shout out to you, Silas. I don't know if you ever see this. But uh, yeah, Silas, his, his mother, Aunt Renee, used to own these films, and horror films. And I remember seeing the cover for this film in the VCR section, like where all the like VCR tapes would be. And I remember seeing like the skull with the eyeballs. And I always thought that was weird. Like, oh, the skull has eyeballs. And it's like looking out, you know what I mean? And it was a part two. And I was just like, wow, you know. And I heard it was like, crazy scary but I watch scary movies but it was like certain things if the cover was a little too frightening I would be kind of reluctant to want to watch it because I don't know I just the cover would just kind of take me off my game you know what I mean so yeah then I finally got a chance to watch the film in college I, that I was I had to be my aunt had this film I had to be about what in my teens early teens thir- like like 12 11 12 teens you know 13 or something like that but then when i finally watched the actual film uh part one and two i was in college and i thought it was interesting it was it was a little grainy because of the vhs you know it, i think it was one of those pass me down vhs tapes you know for those who kids who who are not familiar with VHS tapes, it can get a little grainy, especially when it's passed me down, when you record it and then pass it down or whatever. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I was real excited to see this film. Um, They just dropped a uh, film before this one. I believe it was in the early 2000s. That was hella cringy. Like, just so violent. It was violent as hell. And it was almost cartoonish i might if i remember let let me see if i could just put the other titles in a, in in a order what i think is the least to the greatest or greatest to the least i you know i think i like least to the greatest i think i'll do that so that's only if i remember if i don't remember so anyway let's go ahead and get into it today we're going to be reviewing Yes, Evil Dead Rise. I was pretty excited. I actually did a reaction trailer to this film, and I can't remember what my reaction was. I, I, I believe I was pretty excited. I don't know how excited I was <laughs> watching the trailer, but I, I was. I'm going into it. I was pretty excited. I couldn't wait to see this. Couldn't wait for this film to come out. It was to the point where I was so excited that. I thought the film came out a week before it actually came out and I was looking, you know, looking the film up to get ready to go see it and I was like, dang, I gotta wait another week. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, the director for this film, you have Lee Cronin. Now, you might have seen his work with The Hole in the Ground. I actually watched that film hole in the ground it was okay i mean it was like a c plus type of film it was good enough to get your attention it wasn't anything extra you know um i believe it's on hulu if you want to check it out you need something to watch that's horror or you want to check out mr lee cronin style that's a good start also he wrote minutes past midnight the ghost train story so if I take it that it's different stories and he wrote that particular story. I, I haven't heard of it. I probably need to check it out. It'll be pretty interesting, you know, something to do. Now, the log line for this film, an unsettled auntie surprise visits her family when her nephew accidentally unleashed a demonic presence, trapping them in their building. 
leading to her sister getting possessed. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the characters. The characters for this film. You have Beth, played by Lily Sullivan. You might have seen her work with the Bart Skins TV series. I never heard of the Bark Skins TV series. And you have Ellie, played by Alicia Sutherland. She's not related to Keith or Sutherland. I think she's from, I think she's from Australia, if I'm not mistaken, could be wrong. But you might have seen her work in the Vikings TV series. I have heard of the Vikings, never seen it, but I have heard of it. You have Bridget, played by Gabrielle Eccles. You might have seen her work in The Reminiscence. I never heard of The Reminiscence. It looks like the cover looks pretty interesting. You have Cassie. Which she did pretty good. Like most, like, I, I think I've spoken with Dave P. Cole. It was either Dave P. Cole or, or his brother Ross. They were telling me, no, it might, it might be Jessica. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to all three. They were telling me how child actors are just terrible. But Cassie, well, the, not Cassie. And Cassie's the character. But Nell Fisher, that's who played Cassie. She did a pretty good job. She was pretty believable. Like she was, she was pretty good. I, I, I have to be, I have to be real with you. I have to say, like, out of the top five child actors, she was probably in the five. She would probably be in the five. You know, like, cause I was just watching it. I was like, she, you know, she's doing good. It's not like, you know, like sometimes you have to be like, oh, it's a child actor. You know, and you know when it drags on or whatever. Okay, some people just like, all right, this is just terrible. This child is terrible. Why is this child here? But she she flew with the movie she 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 had a you know she might have a, a a career ahead of her she did pretty good and you can see her in the film north spur i don't know what that is i never heard of north spur now the likes for this film the introduction and the title screen was hard like the introduction i mean they show most of the introduction in the trailer but after you got past the introduction phase, that title screen was so hard to me. It was like, yo, it was like hearing a hard beat. It was like, yo. Like, that's just how I felt when I saw it, like, visually. When I saw the title screen, it was like, you know, Evil Dead Rise, you know. And it was, I think they have that part in the trailer as well that was just hard man like it was on some scarlet witch you know what i'm saying that's that's it was cold man i like that that it was dope it was like you when i saw evil dead right i was like i was that was like the seat belt i was like oh i'm strapped in you know what i'm saying i'm in you know so yeah yeah definitely it had an intriguing side story that like while you're waiting for the horror story the actual real story to kick in the side story was pretty cool like it was like a family story you know a family with family problems because a lot of times in horror movies you see families everybody is great you know what i'm saying wonderful people oh let me get that me me make you some eggs and grits and we having a family dinner and you know and so and so just graduated from college oh isn't that great well you know this person just you know, uh, uh, got, got a raise. Oh, wonderful. And then everything starts going to shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was because it's boring. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, everybody's great. This one is like a real family, like family with real problems. You know, you know, one person is, is basically a lightweight fuck up. You know what I mean? And another person is dealing with this family issue. And it's kind of random, you know, to a certain degree, certain issues. And it doesn't really... And they talk about it enough to make you think that, oh, okay, it's going to come up. Something's going to happen to where we have a better understanding of what's going on. Oh, snap. No, 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 I'm not. No, I, I, I thought about something that it can't be. It can't be. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I was thinking about it may have something to do with Bruce. That would be crazy, though. But Bruce's character, that would be crazy. But no, 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 I don't think so. But 
yeah, I, I definitely like that side the B story. It was cool. It wasn't anything that was just extra. It just kept me entertained. It was like an appetizer until I got my real food. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the Easter eggs was pretty cool. Shotgun chainsaw. You know, it, it, it a lot of callbacks. I'll say, I'll say that it, it was some callbacks that happened in this film. There was some shout outs to some horror greats like Nightmare on Elm Street. There was a shout out to Nightmare on Elm Street verbally and visually. You know, it was a scene with Nancy. You know, it was, a, it was one of the famous, well, it was not the famous scene with Nancy, but it was like the second famous scene with Nancy. You know what I mean? So that was pretty cool. A little, a little call back on that. I like the fact that like DJs and producers like to pop things off in this film they use some reality and that's one thing about like DJs and producers they're going to make music out of anything you know what I mean like they they want to study like they they want to study their craft they want to make the hardest stuff sounds that you never heard of before so you're going to listen to anything anything that's you know worth listening to and if it's trash, if you all watch the Wu-Tang Saga, how RZA was just going into record stores and, you know, getting albums and, you know what I mean? So it was kind of like, it made sense how things popped off, you know? And I don't even, I'm not even a producer, but I was like, hey, I would, you know, I would love if I had producer skills, I would love to, to take a beat from this or, or, or to see if I can make music from this, this type of media. And this is a guy called Sway the Remix God. He, he check him out on Instagram. He like things that go viral. He'll actually take that the audio from whatever that went viral, mix it up, put a beat behind it, and make a beat out of it. You know that's how the girl came out. You about to lose your job. You know what I mean? That's that's how that came. You know came alive. I think that was during the pandemic. Then that became one of the slogans for police brutality situation and they're saying you know you about to lose your job but the point is that's what producers do they they try to take uh, sounds or you know uh, or beats or whatever riffs and try to turn it into something they turn it into listening art you know audio art so so like how things popped off i mean if i if i found some records you know laying around you know where I, where I, I'm not supposed to be, and you know I I probably would have popped it off too, man. I'm not gonna even hold you. So it happens. I like the fact there were no secrets in this film. You know, most films it's like something will happen, and you know, like oh, how did this happen? And the person's like, <whistles> then you find out. Well, uh, I'll tell you what happened at the end of the movie, and it was like, yo, if you would have told me this from the jump, we would have been like trying to prepare. You know, we're trying to end this situation, but yet you didn't even, you know, let us know what's going on, you know. But this one, it was like, how did this happen? It was me. It was me. It didn't beat around the bush, man. It was like, yo, man, I effed up. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't all of that waiting and secrecy and all of that dumbness. Like, I hate those in movies. I don't understand why people keep doing it. Like, yeah, let me put that in there. Let's let's not tell them right away. Let's let's you know, let's keep it a secret. There's like Jason Voorhees decapitating people and they saw a whole bunch of bodies in the in the warehouse. Let's keep it a secret. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, did you did you notice anything strange in the warehouse? Mm, I don't think so. You know, like <laughs> what? <laughs> they weren't keeping secrets in this film. And I appreciated that. Stupid decisions in this film weren't stupid. They were just emotional. You know, it, that that's another thing I did like, because that's realism, you know what I mean? It's like, most people, that's why they tell you, it's better not to react from a, in, from an emotional standpoint, because that's when you're going to make your mistakes. A lot of mistakes happen. Sports, everyday life, however you look at it. Work, you know what I mean? Uh, school, it's best not to work under duress and being stressed and being emotional. You know what I mean? Like you just gotta, like you, you gotta cool yourself down, calm yourself down. You know what I'm saying? Take deep breaths. You know what I'm saying? And get back on that horse and try again. And in 
this film it was like it, and the problem is in movies people just do stupid stuff like why did he do that why did she do that it doesn't make any sense on this one it's like you're emotional so you're making dumb decisions life you know what I mean so I respect that in this one it, it, it kept it it kept it on a realistic level to relate to I'm not gonna front this film had me yelling out you know and that's one thing about me I like I like scaring people <laughs> like I because people at my job I'll be I be pissing them off. I, I, be, <laughs> I do all kind of. <laughs> I'm a terror at my job. I can be that. But when people try to get me back, you know what I'm saying? I be scaring engineers, the front desk, you know, all kind of people. But uh, to get me back is easy. You know what I mean? Like, you make me jump. I'm, I'm going to jump anyway. I'm always going to jump. You know what I mean? But when it comes to making me yell out, you know, uh, you, know you, you got me. You know, don't don't get credit if because you, you did something, not jump back or whatever the case may be. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put that uh that award pendant on your lapel for that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do that. If you made me say, oh, you know, cool. That movie had me doing that. The movie, ah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was certain scenes. It was just like, ah, you know what I mean? So it it was cool in that factor. Was it hella scary? No, I wouldn't say it was hella scary, but it had its scenes. I'll put it that way. It did have its scenes. It kept me engaged. Very engaging film. You know, it was times that I, you know, things that I disagreed with. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do that. You know, it had me talking. You know what I mean? So I, so definitely, it was, it was pretty, it was dope in that aspect. Now, the dislikes. All right, man. One birth control ain't that quick. There was a birth control scene on there. It doesn't take that long. I know, I know. We're not gonna wait around 15 to 20 minutes for for uh, the birth control to work. I get that, but it's my review, and I know because I had to sit in the bathroom. I was with my ex. We got into an argument. She found out she was pregnant, and she talked. We in the women's bathroom now. Well, why don't you wait in here? And wait for the uh and and, and and wait for the pregnancy to turn and i prove to you i am pregnant and i'm some people waiting in the women's bathroom like oh, this motherfucker. you know what i'm saying like like hoping no woman comes knocking on the door while i'm waiting for the pregnancy test to turn you know positive you know what i'm saying so yeah that, that was that was crazy enough that that was a strange time in my life you know so but but yeah yeah, I, I, I thought about that. I was like, I don't take that long. I, I, I was waiting in that bathroom for goddamn forever. I remember that. In, in the middle of damn Chipotle. <laughs> in the Chipotle women's restroom waiting for a pregnancy test to turn positive. While, while Shorty out there writing, doing whatever. Anywho. There were extra bodies. The plus side, there were extra bodies. I was excited to see extra people in this film. Other than the ones that we saw on the tra in the trailer. But... It was they. I didn't like. I, I wasn't feeling how they were used. Like it started off on point, but then after a while, it was kind of like, like it was just like one after you know. It was it was just too fast, man. It, it was just too fast, and also the death scenes weren't creative. That that hallway scene, it was just kind of like. It was lackluster to me. I was just kind of like, uh, I, it, I wanted to like it. I wanted to. The shot was cool. The shot through the, the peephole, that was cool, you know. But it was just what was going on and everything was just kind of like, it was just too damn fast, man. It was just, uh, we're back to the trailer again, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I wasn't feeling like, I was excited to see more people in it, but then it was just too fast too fast and too lame of too 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 lame of kills i mean the kills were lame you know what i mean so wasn't feeling that at all there was a scene where the brother his name was caleb yeah caleb he he went to do he went to get something and i felt like the sister should have egged him on like that whole thing of, uh, oh, you know, like like they should have been their siblings, right? You know what I mean? Like he can go get whatever he needs to get. The sister needs to egg him on. Perfect example. I have a niece, right? My niece is like 
few couple of years younger than me, you know. So she's like my youngest. She's not really like my she she's my niece, but we don't act like niece and uncle. You know, we act like brother and sister. So and she eggs me on to do stuff. You know what I mean? She like instigator, you know what I mean? She's the reason why I got this tattoo. Right? She's the reason why I have this tattoo. Now, the thing is, don't tattoo. But she was like, hey, Rashad, how, why not, you know, I'm going to get a tattoo. You want to get a tattoo with me? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't get tattoos. That's not my thing. Uh, yeah, but this is something we can do together. So she ends up getting, so I got this big shit. And she ends up getting a little star. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's real. That's realism. That whole thing, you know, little girls and sugar and spice and everything nice. Like they, like, like the whole thing, they try to make her seem like a goody two shoes. Like, I hate that in movies. No, make her what she is. Make her, egg her brother on to, you know, pop the shit off. Then when shit goes left, she don't hold herself accountable. That's life. That's re that You can't get no real than that right there. She doesn't hold herself accountable. Oh, I can't believe you, you're the reason for all of this popping off. Yo, you told me to do it. You got a mind of your own. Nobody told you to do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't hold herself accountable. That's real. That's you can't get no real than that. That whole thing of, you know, you know, her doing the right thing and all of that. No, man. No. She egg them on. That's what brothers and sisters do. They're young. And plus she's young. Yeah, she's young. She's a young girl. She doesn't hold herself accountable. Yeah, she was behind the whole she would be behind the situation too. But she doesn't hold herself accountable for shit. You know what I'm saying? That's real life. Everybody knows that. That's life. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't go that route. I wish they would have though, because it would have been like, man, this this thing is this thing is pretty jamming. You know what I'm saying? So much realism in this in this uh, demonic movie. You know what I mean? That, that it, and it makes you relate more because it's more realism. You know what I mean? Everybody, you, come on, man. You know, come on. Stop. Stop with the sugar and spice shit, man. You know, no. Let her be in on it and don't hold herself accountable. More people can relate to that. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead with our comparisons. So, the movie that stood out to me, I knew this was going to be a comparison when I saw the trailer. I knew this from the jump. This film, I compared to Demons 2. Dario Argento's film. And that was a good movie when I was young. I watched it when I was young. And it was scary. They kind of went away from the whole Demons 2 vibe. Because Demons 2 was more or less like they were trapped inside an apartment. Same situation. They are trapped. And the power went out. And so you couldn't get out. Like, like, like everything was electronic when you leave out of the doors, when you leave out of the garage, and all of that. And once electricity goes out, can't get out you're trapped and then a possession happens within the hotel or within the apartment and the whole apartment gets flooded with demons and it's like zombies in a way like when they bite you or scratch you you become a, you automatically become a demon so and they're like running up and down the hotels and flights and steps and stuff like that so the only difference was it was based on one floor you know in Evil Dead Rising, just one floor, and they and they, they trapped you. They trapped the residents. One floor, that's it. And that was a little disappointing because I was like, I was hoping we were gonna get that Demons Two feel where it was just multiple people. Like you had segments in Demons Two where you had people working out in the fitness center, and you had one group and they were like, fight back. You know what I'm saying? They had a black dude leader and stuff like that, and then you had a, a little boy that was left alone that you had like a dog you know what I mean I think the little boy was with the dog I can't remember that part then you had like a pregnant couple then you had they did like a birthday party you know what I'm saying it was like different sections of people in the apartment where things just go left and then like and like you you pick you kind of like have a choice to be like all right you know me when I was young when I saw this I was at my father's uh, spot rest in peace pops and um and I remember I was hoping you know the little boy survived and I knew it was the, the pregnant woman. You know, of course, you want her to survive. I wanted the black dude to survive that was in the fitness center. He was black. Um, 
And you know, like like you had these choices of people that you wanted to survive, and then that person gets taken out, and you're like, damn. You know what I'm saying? And then that person gets taken out. You know what I mean? So, and it was like no holes bars either. It wasn't like an American film, because I think it's an Italian film. But American film, you know, it's like, all right, they're going to save the kids and stuff like that. You know, like, it was no holes bars and demons too. I thought it was going to be something like that. It, it kind of was, but it was just one floor. You know what I mean? One floor of chaos. You know, where demons too. It was like a whole apartment complex from, you know, like 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 30 something floors you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah i was hoping it would have that but it did when they blocked up floors out, i was like dang you know oh uh, okay you know what i mean but, but but they did what they did so the rating for this film i give this film eight cheese graters yeah eight cheese graters and for those who and everybody should know what I'm talking about. It's in the trailer. It's, it's in the trailer. So, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, and that's the part that I screamed on. It was like, I yeah, I was like, I screamed. Let me rephrase that. That's the part I yelled out on. A man yelled, her. And I, had, I, had, I had bass in my voice when I yelled out. It was, her. You know what I'm saying? It sounded like I was constipated. You know, that's, that's how deep my voice was when I yelled out on that scene. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I didn't yipe, you know what I'm saying? Or yelp, you know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a nice, strong, constipated, Rrr! you know, when I yelled out in that scary scene. I, I think my anticipation, my, because watching the trailer, I imagine watching the trailer that when the cheese grater hit the leg, that it, the skin and meat was going to come through the cheese grater, grater like, like cheese, you know what I'm saying? So like my own imagination made the scene worse when I finally saw it. Cause at first I was like, why would you show the cheese grater in the in the um, in the trailer? But it actually, you anticipate it, and it and it was like right right where they grabbed the cheese grater, <laughs> right where the scene happened. Right as soon as you saw the cheese grater, you knew what was going to happen. It was like oh, them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man, man, scared voice. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. Um, and I, another thing too for the people who did see this film, the first shall be last. Hopefully, y'all caught it. The first shall be last. <laughs> that was that was an interesting, a little interesting twist. All right, so there's no in credit scenes in this film, so you don't have to stay the whole time unless you want to find out who the key grip is and all of that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I have to say this is the top one so far. This is the top horror movie so far. Yeah, so. Also, too, I want to say The Order, what I think was the best of the Evil Deads. So, I'll start from the bottom, and I'll make my way to number one. So, is it five? Let's see. So, you got Evil Dead 1. That's my number five. Number four will be the Evil Dead series. Number three will be the early Evil Dead. Early Evil Dead. <laughs> uh, the early, earlier 2000 Evil Dead. And I was like, look, it, it was it was gory as hell, very cringy. But also, it was kind of cartoony. It was taping everything up. It, 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 get your get your head chopped off. It was taped. Ah, we're just gonna tape it back. Tape your head back on. You know, this is scotch taping every goddamn thing. You know, number two would have to be. Shoot, that's a hard. No, no, that's not a hard one. That's not a hard one. Uh, this one. This will be number two. This will be number two. It, it was good, but of course, you know, with Bruce Campbell, it's always going to be. I mean, Bruce Campbell was in the, the first one, too. But Bruce Campbell, uh, Evil Dead 2, is, you know, Bruce Campbell, I mean, that's a classic. And it's, it's kind of hard to beat the classics. But I, in my book, I feel like this made it to number two. This is the second best Evil Dead movie. You know what I'm saying? So, there. Yeah. That, uh, that, that fit uh, five. That's, that's dope. That, you know, I was like, man, maybe I'm not, maybe I have to do a four. <laughs> 
top top four or top six or something like that. But it, no, five, top five. That that worked. That really that really worked. But yes, that is it for Criticals Blue Reviews. Please. Like, comment, subscribe, or subscribe, comment, like, comment, like, subscribe, comment, subscribe, like, however you want to do it. But just do it, baby. Tell me what you think. Write down what you think in order as the best uh, Evil Dead uh uh, uh, films, series. We're just not going to use games. I, I didn't play the game, so I, I don't know. If y'all want to throw the game in there, y'all can do that. I, I, I didn't play the game, so. But yeah, tell me what you think. You know, what was the uh, all the the Evil Dead titles? You know, and, and do it in order. You know, least to greatest, however you want to do it, greatest to least. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, let me know what you're thinking and what is going on, alright? So that is it for Criticals Blue Reviews. Pass me around to your friends. Pass me around like a demonic book. Yeah. yeah. Pass me around like a necromancer. Thing that makes people pass me around like a Necronomicon. I, I know I probably said it wrong. <laughs> I just off the top of the head, Necronomicon. No, I'm saying I'm saying it like a country person, like a country. A Necronomicon is na Necronomicon. Not na na I'm saying Necro, 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 a Necronomicon, a Necro, a Necronomicon. Yeah, pass me around like a Necronomicon. You know what I'm saying? Let's get let's get everybody possessed. My subscriptions. <laughs> anyway, man, that is it. I'm about to go to bed. As you as you probably look, now you like, man, it, you look tired as hell. Hey, I am tired. It's time for bed. You know what I'm saying? But thank you for chilling with me and listening to my review. Y'all have a good one and be safe out there, alright? Take care. One.